The journey of the user improvements started in, in 2023. When the system started being used in Ernst that year, users started mentioning points for improvement. The OA tool team decided therefore to organize a design thinking workshop in September 2023. The focal points were interviewed through phone interviews and also uh, a couple of them could participate to the design thinking workshops themselves. The aim of the design thinking workshop was to address the pain points that users have mentioned, to improve the satisfaction and then to raise their interest and commitment. At the design thinking workshop, we could identify four main pain points. The first one was that users felt lost in the system. On the home page, they found too many boxes that confused them and also they didn't know what to do next. The system also made reference, reference to tasks that had no understandable titles for the users. The system was using its own internal references, such as, for example, face number 1315, or it was, it was using audit numbers that had no reference with what they were really doing. The third issue that, they, that the users highlighted was that auditing was hard because they did not know where they were in the process. The fourth issue was that that of team leaders with larger teams. The system did not allow them easily to verify what the team members were doing, what audits they had planned and what findings they were following up. In the rest of the video, I will explain how we have addressed these issues. We have modified the home page based on your feedback. If you remember before, auditors, quality checkers, section managers all had different portals. Also, the super user had a different portal. Now, the home page is a unique one, and it is the, the user portal that is, shares, that is shared amongst all users. In the home page, we kept the features that users like most. So we have kept the finding and observation tile for the open findings, the one for the due findings, and also the one for the overdue findings. We've also kept the link to the training playlists on YouTube, but we made the link more prominent here on the right hand side of the screen. We've added an announcement section where we can inform you, for example, of system downtime. All users will see my approval holders widget. Auditors will be able to see here the number and the name of the organization that they're working on. Also, they're going to be able to see the role that they have in that organization. So for example, you can see that for the first organization, I am a team member the team leader for the second and the deputy team leader for the third one. Of course, the length of this widget will depend on the number of projects or the number of approvals that you can work on. This widget may also be empty, for example, for section managers who do not directly work on a project. Also for super users and administrative staff, this uh, widget will be empty. Quality checkers will see here on the right hand side of the screen the quality check uh, widget. Here they're going to be able to see the quality checks that are pending for them, the phase number, the number of the approval and also the nature of the phase that they need to review. So in this case it will be significant change, surveillance or of course initial. Section managers will see the just beneath my approval holders widget, they will see manager tasks and approvals. Again, here they're going to see the type of task. So for example, manage the approval, confirm a project team. They're going to see the phase number, the approval number, and also the nature of the phase that they need to work on. Super users 
will, in addition to my approval holders widget, will see organization requests to approve organizations that have been entered manually in the system and not through an SAP upload. To summarize, this page for users will not be as busy as it is shown now on screen for training purposes. Users will normally see just a couple of widgets. For example, more experts, um, EASA auditors will see my approval holders widget and the quality check widget. Section managers will see my approval holders widget empty normally and the managers tasks and approval widget. Other staff such as EASA management or admin staff will only see my the empty my approval holders widget. To address the issue that many users reported about the home page and the too much information offered here, we have created a dedicated My To Do page. You will find this on the navigation bar on the left hand side of the screen. If you click on it, you will see first of all your own tasks and then on a separate tab the delegated activities. So that is the activities that team leaders delegate to other lead auditors. I will describe each of the, of the tabs in more detail later in this video. My to-do list will provide auditors with a clear view of what needs to be done. So I am in my to-do list under the tab My Activities. My activity tabs concentrates on activity that I, as auditor, need to perform. This page is divided into three main parts. The first part is my activity timeline. On this view, on this calendar, you don't need to do anything. In here, you're going to see all the audits, inspection and meetings that you are assigned to either as lead auditor, as a team member, or as an observer. They will simply appear once you have been uh, associated to, that, to a particular audit. In the timeline, you will also see when the surveillance phases are coming due, and also when the change phase should be completed by. Notice how the tiles will provide you at a glance with the majority of information that you need. In the yellow part here, you will see whether the activity is an audit, an inspection or a meeting. On the second line, you're going to have the approval number and on the third line, the title that you have associated to the audit. In this case, you can see, for example, that the audit is the surveillance audit number three of the cycle. The blue link will take you to the audit itself. It's a, link, a direct link to the audit. Next to the little man here, you will find your name and then beneath your role. In this case, you can see that I am the lead auditor. In here, you can also find, for example, team member or observer. In the purple boxes, you will find the status of the audit, which is in this case is open plan draft. The face style will show you similar information. They will provide you with information about the approval number, about the, tape, the type of face, the uh, OA tool phase number that will also allow you to see a preview and your role. So in this case, you can see that I am the team leader and the date also by which the recommendation for continuation should be completed by. The second part of the page covers your activity list. So in this grid, you will find all of the activities that you need to perform. With activities, we mean audits. We also mean the phases as well as the findings. 
as it is customary in, in the tool and also as is covered in previous views, here you're going to be able to create default views that make sense to you. So for example, I have created here one view for my audits so that I can see, for example, the due date of my, of my audits, the organization, the, uh, the approval number. And also here, I created another view for my findings. Remember, you've got enough fields here to create a view that should really fit your needs. So, for example, I can see that for this level two finding, I can, I can display the cap due date as well the due date. I can see at which stage it is and I can also see the responsible party. Remember, if you click on the fields here, you're going to be able to hide or show fields that will allow you to create the perfect, the perfect view for you. On the third part of the screen, you will find my pending ad hoc tasks. Here you will find all ad hoc tasks that you created for the organization or for a fellow colleague. And they will, you, they will be displayed here until they have been closed. The delegated activities tab on my to-do list will be populated only if you have assigned or if somebody else is performing as lead auditor audits or inspection on an organization for which you are the team leader. So in practical terms, when you are the team leader and you assign an audit to someone else. The delegated activity tabs is structured in a very similar way to my activities tab. At the top of the page, you will find the delegated activities timeline that will show you the audit that you have assigned to other lead auditors. For example, here you will find that for uh, approval number AUC1, uh, here you will find the direct link to the audit. Alessandra will be the team leader and will audit at a test location. Notice how all the audits then will be plotted on a calendar. Please remember that if you would like to see at a glance all of the audits that need to be performed for a certain phase for a certain organization, the place where you're going to have a complete view is the phase. So for example, if you would like to see all of the activities that need to be performed inside the surveillance phase, simply click on my activities button and then access the phase. Let's go back now to the delegated activities tab of my to-do list. Just beneath the calendar view, you will find a list with all the audits that is also shown in the calendar view that you have assigned to other lead auditors, but also you will find the findings that are open but are assigned to, to lead auditors that are different from you. You're going to have the possibility of creating views that will allow you to see the open findings. Also remember, under the fields view, you are going to be able to select other data that might be of interest to you, such as, for example, the cap due date or the due date of the, of the finding itself. One of the main pain points that the users mentioned while using the tool is that they often got lost. With that, they meant that if they were working inside a finding, for example, they found it hard to find their way back to the organization approval page or to the phase, for example. To solve this problem, we have recreated the high level organization structure that you can see on screen on the navigation panel on the left hand side of the screen itself. So beneath the status of the object that you're currently working on, so for example, the state of an audit of a finding, you will always find the link to the organization approval, where you're going to find more information about the project team or about the post holders, for example. 
Beneath the approval, you're going to find then the direct link to the phase, so to the initial surveillance and oversight or change phases. Beneath the phase, you're going to find the link to the activities, so to the audits or to the non-audit activities that you were working on. Inside the activities, you're going to find the findings and observations. And inside that, or beneath that, you're going to find actions and extensions. Underneath non-audit activities, you're going to find instead the ad hoc actions. In the rest of this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly how this cascading logic works object by object. The first object where the changes will be visible is the phase. Inside surveillance, initial or change phases, first of all, you're going to see the status of the phase itself. In this case, you can see that my surveillance phase is in status pending investigation. Beneath that, you're going to find the approval number, which also is a link to the main organization page that you can quickly reach simply clicking on the approval number. Beneath that, you've got, you've got the legal name of the organization. Inside the new gray boxes, you will find the most important information about the object that you're working in. In this case, you can see that I am working inside the surveillance phase 2022-2025. So this is the first place where you're going to see the actual nature and the actual description of the phase that you're working on. You're also going to find the phase duration for surveillance phases and the phase start and end dates. We've also modified the audit so the navigation will be easier. As you can see here, I am inside surveillance audits number three. At the top, you're going to find the status of the audit, which in this case, it is open plan draft. Then you're going to see the approval number and the name of the organization. Notice how the approval number is at the same time also the link back to the organization. Beneath that, you're going to have the description of the phase inside which the audit is created. If you click on the blue um, reference from the system, so in this case uh, PH1313, you're going to immediately be able to go back to the phase and see, for example, what other audits or activities you've planned for the phase. Inside the grey box, you're going to find the most important information about the audit. So you're going to find the name of the lead auditor, for example, the planned start and end dates, whether the audit is remote or not, or whether it is announced or not. The next object that we have improved is the finding. As you can see here, I am inside a level two finding. At the top of the left hand sidebar, you will find the status of the finding, which in this case is pending response. Beneath that, you're going to find the approval number and the legal name of the organization. Remember, the approval number is also the link back to the organization page. Beneath that, you're going to have the link to the phase so that, for example, you can see what other audits are planned for the organization. Inside that, you will find the link to the audit so that you can see other findings, for example. Inside the grey box, you're going to find the most important information about the finding. You will find, for example, the regulatory paragraph against which the finding was opened, in this case, ORO AOC 140. 
and then you're going to find the evidence that you raised. Remember, the system will in the first instance only show the first couple of lines of the evidence that you raised, but if you hover with your mouse on top of the text, then you will see that the full text that you wrote will be displayed. If the finding was raised at an on-site audit, then also the site and location will be displayed. Further down, you will find the original due date and also the extended due date, in case the funding was extended. Last, you will find an information whether the finding is repetitive or not. We also improve navigation inside the extensions. You will find a similar cascading pattern as you've seen before. So, at the top, you will find the status of the object that you're looking at. So in this case, I can see that my extension is resolved approved. Then you will find again the approval number and the name of the organization, with the approval number being also the link back to the organization page. Then you will have the phase number, that also is a link to go back to the phase, in case you would like to see, for example, other audits or activities that are planned. Then you have the link to the activity, so to the audit, and then the link to the level 2 finding in this case. Here you will find some more information about the finding itself. For example, the regulatory paragraph against which the finding was raised, the evidence, the site, and whether the finding was repetitive or not. Then you will find the original due date of the finding, and then the date that was proposed inside the extension itself. One of the main pain points that the users mentioned was that they found very difficult to navigate in the system while they were auditing. They simply found too many tabs, too many sections, and that confused them. So, to avoid that, we have streamlined the investigation page to make it more user-friendly. So, here I am inside an investigation, and I've just come out of the planning stage and I moved to the investigation stage. As you can see here, I am investigating. What the system will do now is that until you have, closed, you have not closed all of the checklists, then it will first of all open the section Checklist Overview that will allow you to see the checklist that you need to perform and also their status. So simply clicking on the checklist ID, you're going then to be able to audit and to perform your, uh, to perform your review. So now I have gone through my checklist. So you see that now that I am again in the investigate stage, the system will directly tell me that I now need to open my findings and my observations. Look how the system now has closed the checklist overview tab because my checklist is now resolved and completed and it has directly opened the, or brought my attention to the evidence of non-compliance and observation section. The evidence of compliance section is still here at the top and if you wish to review your evidences of compliance, you simply need to open this section. Let's go back to the evidences of non-compliance section for now. As you can see here, the system will prompt you to raise your funding and observation. Here you're going to, read, to be able to read the description of your evidences, the high-level regulatory paragraph as before, and then whether it is a non-compliance or an observation. Notice also how we have improved the look and feel of the raise finding button. That way it will be easier for you to find and therefore to raise your finding and observations. I have just associated all the evidences of non-compliance and the observation that I had before to findings and to one observation. And as you can see, the system now takes me directly to the findings and observation section, which is open for me. 
So the system has done nothing more than focusing my uh, attention to the next step in the system. So once the evidences of non-compliance and observation have been associated to finding, then the system has closed the section and is now focusing my attention on the section that is of interest to me, so the findings and observations. Now, if while I reread my evidences, I see that I'm not happy, all I need to do is simply to open the section, click on the pencil and modify the description of my evidence. I can also view again the evidence of compliance that I've raised and from here, from the top of the list and the checklist overview, I can simply navigate back to the checklist in case I need to review something. So, as I said, the system is now focusing automatically the attention to the section that I need to work on so that I make less mistakes. Yet, all the sections that you are familiar with are still there and they can simply be opened with a click. As always, we are ready to support you and your organizations. Just send an email to oatool-support at easa.europa.eu to reach one of us and then to get the support that you need. Thank you.